Almost there. Almost there. Hey, finally, that's a lot of pictures. That was almost three songs worth of pictures. I did do my due diligence. Well, first of all, hey, folks, Lester and Jamie here. It's nice to see you all. Let me hide the comment there. Uh, so many happy people all in one place was the one of the comments that I read. And we certainly appreciate that. It's been a fun day. It's Easter yeah, happy 2024. Easter, he is risen. He has risen. I think I did it wrong in my video this morning. I put he has risen. I didn't know it. He is risen. And there's supposedly a difference because I said it in the past tense and everyone corrected me real fast. So number one comment on my drone video was I need to get my expression correct. Anyway. Well, I learned something new today. I had no idea. I had so no 12 idea. 12 years at Catholic school will get you. Oh. No education whatsoever on mm. that. It's okay. Uh, it is Easter. We have the boys here behind me somewhere over there playing. I hear them. I hear them. Uh, they are over here playing soccer in the yard. Yeah. <laughs> and that's fine. Very we like, festive. We like them to be out and about doing stuff. And uh, we got a really neat video recorded today. Not from my phone, not from your phone, but uh, from Lex. He uh, recorded us having a horseshoe. Is it called horseshoes? Yeah. A horseshoes tournament. And uh, we had received that in the mail, a gift. And we opened it today to play as, as a family. And so Lex and Connor wanted to be on a team versus you and me. Yeah. And uh, it was close for a while. But at the very end, guess who got a ringer? The only ringer of the day, I, I believe. Be One honest, ringer. Like I, I was. I surprised myself even. <laughs> we started I'm not off very athletic. So I don't know if you guys know this, and I don't know if the official rules are or whatever. But I think you start off in the rule book. It had a thirty-six foot. It had a rule book. Yes, or a twenty-four foot, 
or an 18 foot, depending on the age of your participants. And so we started off with a 24 foot from stake to stake. And we ended up moving down to 18 because it was a long toss. Even my poor shoulders are saying, oh, my God, that's a long toss. I actually was like, how is he playing this? How is he doing this? No, so we it had must to shorten. Because it was low. So mm -hmm. We had to uh, shorten our playing field a little bit. But uh, can you imagine a 36 foot from stake to stake? That's a we're long. We're not those people. No, we're not those people. <laughs> uh, but anyway, um, Lex and Connor put up a good fight. So I'll hope at some point, once Lex does his video, you guys will come in and visit for a little while and see how that went. That was my first time playing horseshoes. So we, Easter has always been a family time outside cornhole, up north. Probably corn. No, washers or oh. hillbilly golf uh, or wiffle ball was typically, those, those three items were the uh, sports of choice up north on Easter day. In fact, I heard from my mom today at Easter, Xander was the all-time pitcher in the wiffle ball game in the front yard today. So that was kind of funny to be able to hear that I missed out on a bunch of munchkins and Xander. I'm sorry. It was all right. Well, you had me, and we had a great dinner. We did. Uh, candy? No, that's ridiculous. Do I have to subscribe in order for you guys to say hi or anything like that? Absolutely not. We um, said hi in the beginning to everybody. We you did. missed it, Candy. So what we do is, uh, ma'am... Um, and I say this with all due respect, but there's like 5,000, almost 5,000 folks watching. And so the comments over here in all of the different pages, platform, what do you call it? Pages are all in together in one right here. So it's kind of a jumbled mess with all the comments. So we can't read every one of them. I can just reach over and click, reach over and click and grab them here and there. So that's, we don't it purposely ignore anybody. Now we will ignore some people. If they're like screaming and hollering for, for attention, we'll ignore those folks. But uh, I, we have no reason to ignore you. We don't pick and choose uh, who we say hi to. We are blessed to have you all. And we're blessed that you allow us into your phones and into your homes. So thank you for that. So I know I just talked a little bit about my family's traditions. Like after we eat, go outside, do things like that. Your family tradition is a little bit different. Meaning? Talk about how, wh like, what the normal thing is for Easter so for tomorrow. So, we don't have a Sunday dinner on Easter Sunday. That is the, because, and, you know, it's, it's rare to have a Christmas dinner as well. Because a lot of family members want to go visit other family as well. So, for example, Stephanie and Buddy will go off and see Stephanie's family. Uh, Megan, Ellie will go off and do stuff with Megan's family. Uh, you know, Tina and Rob are off with Rob's family. So, and that's in Uvalde. That's a, that's a four or five hour drive from here. So everyone can't be available all day, all the time. So what we normally do on Easter is uh, my mom and dad will do a sunrise breakfast, usually down in the woods uh, along the river somewhere. And dad will go down ahead of time and mow it all up nice and pretty and he'll do out some uh, easter eggs for the kiddos and uh, we do a little easter service and an uh, egg hunt and by 9 30 10 o'clock we're done for the day it's very that's kind of nice from a family function standpoint because i remember when xander was little trying to make sure that he hit all of the houses you know like my house is dad's house my, and then i both of my grandparents were still alive and both of my parents and like it was just like so much and overwhelming that we told everybody to start combining it because holidays aren't meant to be stressful like that uh, so that's really nice that your family does that early morning thing to give everybody else free time to go spend with the rest of the family yeah it, it works out best that way um i um I'm trying to enjoy your conversation, uh, but uh, we have a lot of questions coming up over here. And this is true. And I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about this, but a lot of creators are only chatting these days or allowing people that subscribe pay to play, if you will. But we don't do that here, folks. We're, we're, we, we don't do that. We ask you not to. We're, we're fine. And so we don't ask you for anything. We, um, we like it that you come and, and hang out with we us. We like it that you're just here and that we are able to do things together and stuff. So, now, all right, so let's go ahead and squash that. Now we got dogs of bark and we got all kinds of stuff happening. We got the kids playing soccer behind us. Dogs are off barking in the corner. Lord, happy Easter. <laughs> uh, Jamie and I camped out last night over at the 
J and L Ranch property. Well, I did not make a pee pat video of you this morning. Did Aww. you know that? I, I never know when you are and when you're not until I, I end thought, up watching them. I thought <laughs> I would be sweet and give you the day off of, of watching all of your movements. Plus, you didn't weren't wearing anything fancy. So Oh, my fuzzy Crocs don't count as fancy to you? Not anymore. Those are um, over. Old, that's old school, old news. <laughs> so, no, it's been a glorious day. Beautiful weather here. Jamie's worked outside most of the day. I did quite a few things as well. And, uh, I, of course, I went to the sanctuary. We had some stuff going on over there. Got Lex and Connor hung out with Ellie. That was yesterday. We had a IHOP dinner, so it's been a busy weekend. Very busy weekend. I had a busy weekend. You gonna talk I, about what you did with Uncle Dan? I don't know if I got. I should, am I allowed to say it? Is it a surprise? Uh, it's not a surprise. As it, actually, it may be a good plug for Dan's channel. Okay. Go ahead and talk about it. What's it gonna? I hurt? got a text this week that was like, "Hey." This is Daniel from Daniel Morrow Outdoors. We were doing a cooking series on on states in the U.S. And Illinois came up and we were wondering if you were interested in joining us. It was all professional and stuff. So I, of course, responded of like, well, is there a contract? And <laughs> what times do I have to be there? Is there a certain attire? And all of this other stuff. And anyway, I went to Dan and Lou's house last night and uh, did a cooking with Dan and Lou series. And... Uh, it was a really, really good time, and I, I added my own little Jamie twist to some of it as well, so there's a bonus video that will be out after Dan and Lou's video comes out. Here's the problem. There it is right there. So your state is next. Actually, it was her state. Now, you haven't seen that video yet. Dan hasn't posted it yet, but the video has been recorded, and Jamie is the special guest on the Illinois. But I don't know when his episode shows. That's the thing is, I don't know when he's going to post his episode. So I'm sort of holding out because I I have a video to, to follow it up, and that needs to be posted too, so I'm not sure. I'm not sure what's going to happen. I, I don't know. But, uh, oh, everyone's saying on Thursdays. So I got to wait all the way till Thursday. <laughs> you have to post yours on Friday then. Oh. So if Daniel makes his videos for Thursday. Guys, this is actually a great time to talk about this. Remember that most video creators, especially long video creators, like what our family do, we do long videos, which are longer than three minutes, long videos, short videos are shorter than three minutes. So three minutes and less short video creators, three minutes and more long video creators. And long video creators rarely will make a video and post it the same day because it takes time to edit, you know, all that kind of stuff, upload, schedule, uh, get it approved with everything approved, have to go through an approval process. And so all that stuff takes time. And so if Dan recorded yesterday, which is Saturday, and that gives them plenty of time to get it all built and uploaded and stuff. So, yeah, on Thursday. These guys know all about where Dan's going this week and, and all kinds of things coming up. So y'all are Dan in the know. Dan keeps no secrets, I guess. Right? Okay. So Thursday, Dan's video will play. Mine will play on Friday then cool. for, for that piece. But it was a really good time. And then afterwards, they did egg dyeing. And that's where I sort of like snuck out the back because that's a lot of loud like a lot of loud. And uh, do you want to know, this is, this is, your family's going to kill me for this. Do you want to take a guess at who the three loudest were? So I already know who the loudest are. So, okay. So for number one loudest in the entire family is Tina. She wasn't there. T if Tina's not there, number two loudest is my mom. Was she there? So my mom is very loud. Kim is very loud. You're never going to guess number three. Of because, most loudest. Yes. Now, when we say loud, we don't mean just people that talk amplified. They're people that seem like they have to scream to be heard. And so they scream all the time. <laughs> Tina, and I'm not being mean. No, no, we're not being mean. No. But uh, my mom will will scream. My mom screams. Um, Kim, Tina... I don't know who would be number three because I know that anybody can be loud to 
get attention or whatever. But as far someone saying Brie, it has to be Brie. I don't think Brie's that loud. Not it. Not Brie. Now Brie can be loud. Brie can be don't loud. Don't be long. Every Morrow <laughs> has an elevation of voice that they can raise to be a because they've all been around it so much that like they know if they want to be heard, they got to take it up ten knots. But that's not who I'm just talking about. Is genuinely just a loud person just loud well first of all take that back about every morrow is loud because actually not all ellie's very quiet lex is very quiet their dad is also fairly quiet most of the time um so that was i'm saying like lou in a, lou is quiet hold on i'm saying like in a in a room stephanie's quiet everybody has the capability Buddy's quiet everyone has the capability to go to escalate higher because they know of the circumstance because it's a, they're a loud bunch okay okay we're a loud bunch that's Fine. all this isn't mean don't take offense but <sighs> well you're you gonna guess that third person because it isn't jake either uh everyone is starting to say be grace brinley can be loud carter can be loud carter Even carter is right up there with your mom and <laughs> and kim and it's funny to me because the rest of the room stays benign the whole time everybody's just kind of talking like this yeah because i hadn't been to like the egg dying before that was the first thing and it was after it was after dinner so like you know people were fed so like most of the time people are pretty subdued during that time yeah no <laughs> Well, no, they're amped up they, for egg dying. It they was are. It was dying. like a really big thing. But I will tell you, little Carter will not be soft spoken ever. She says everything when she's in that situation. She says everything at the <laughs> highest that she can because she wants everybody to know that she's saying it. And it made me laugh really hard. I just found myself in the corner just laughing about it and just like, oh my gosh. And Dan would be like, why are you hot? Why are you back in the corner? Why, Dick? Why, why are you not talking to anyone? I'm like, there's. Who can talk? <laughs> you know who's probably the loudest of everybody, but I bet they were not there. And you guys wouldn't know this, but Elijah. That's Elijah Tina's. Wasn't there, yeah. So Tina's sec Tina's youngest son, Elijah, is he has a voice that 19, carries like that. Too. 20. Oh, Elijah, it can be loud. And then we used to take Elijah. We used to well, we pretty much much raised Elijah and Ben, but we would take Elijah places and in the car. He can't sit in the back seat and just talk to whoever he's talking to. Everyone. He must make sure the entire have, car has like, voices that carry. Your mom has one of those too. I don't think she genuinely is yelling. I think she just talks loud, and like she, her voice just goes. It just goes. But Lil Carter has got that gene, and like <laughs> everybody else is just used to it. And I'm like Carter's trying. Like I'm thinking like, does no one hear her? Because I sure hear her. But everybody else has that like thing where they can like just zone into it or whatever. Yeah. And I'm just like eating more at that point in time <laughs> stress eating yes yes that's funny guys there's a lot of questions coming through we don't normally answer questions during the live we kind of talk just as friends here we're all just ch chatting and talking together so if we could save the questions till later on towards the end um uh, i'll be happy to answer as many as i can but uh, let's not just bombard the comments with questions where you're demanding to have answers about different things but uh, jamie and i kind of always sit down with an idea of how we're going to well, we always have an idea how we would like the night to go, but uh, does, things don't always go according to plans, obviously. But um, let's just ask a little, some of the questions towards the end, if we could. No, but, uh, you know, I'm used to it. I may not realize sometimes how loud everyone can be because it's just, you know, I'm used to it. But you coming in from a fairly quiet family to a very loud family, because we are a loud family. Is very but. different, and, and it, here's what's here's the other side of it too. My family up north now has six kids under the age of eight, as well. So even my, the family functions that I recall and remember being a part of were always very quiet. You could talk across the room, play oh, cards, no. and and you could have five tables of cards going with all with twenty people in the basement, and no one is ever that loud. But <laughs> now. Now Xander will like like send me a video and I'm like oh my gosh what it's, what yeah, it's, what is going on there and he's like mom it's just like mayhem he's like we just <sighs> we have to take everybody outside so I assume that all family functions have a decibel level but but I will say that the Maros are like they're 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 a loud bunch and um, I'll tell you what it it, it could be a little bit overbearing. And it could also, if you have anxiety issues, you couldn't really hang around for long because there's a lot going on at a typical 
Sunday dinner. And Jamie's right. It's kind of like everyone's talking. I don't think that they're demanding that everyone hears them, but there's so many people having side conversations that you feel like it has to get louder and louder. And you're in a metal building with a concrete floor, so it also carries and yeah. the sounds bouncing off. And you got chairs scraping on the floor and kids running underneath. Somebody's yelling for the ketchup. Yesterday, your sister Kim was like, I can't eat this without ketchup and like freaking out. Then you have kids that are begging for more French fries. The other kids are like, are we ever going to are we ever going to color eggs? And uh. then you have like hot things that are behind you from where you just got done cooking and there's more kids running around. And I know yesterday there was only like four kids there, but it felt like 27 Yeah. because I'm just like watching everything. And I'm, I'm just not used to that much going on at one time. So I had escaped all of that. I took the boys to yeah. eat at IHOP, uh, Ellie, Connor, and uh, Lex, we all took off to IHOP and we had some uh, breakfast for dinner, which is amazing. But uh, yeah, so when I got back, I got to hear all about Jamie's adventure at Dan's house with all of the. Michael says I'm much more loud than you. Well, yes, obviously. I mean, come on. I mean, come on. Catching flies, are we? Am I really? Catching flies? No, no, be honest with me right now. Am I louder than you? Well, come on, Jane. I'm not trying to be mean. But... I don't even know. I'm not taking yeah. it as mean, but I didn't know. Well, Jamie, the comments are letting you know they're not, they had no reason to lie. They have no reason. Look, everyone, they have no reason why. They're all saying, yeah, it's just, you're loud. Jamie. I don't really think I'm loud. I think in the beginning, so many people are like, we can't hear you. We can't hear you. So now when I know the noise is up, I will escalate in a video. But in, gen in like <laughs> real life. You are louder, Jamie. Everyone's saying, yes, you are loud. There's a few You are saying, pretty you know? loud. That's hilarious. <laughs> At the I'm, moment you are, says Linda. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, I'm, my goodness. No, but in real life, do you feel like I'm louder than you, like in our conversations? So this is the most annoying thing about you. And, our, and you're doing it right now, too. She, hold on. Please, don't do that. I'm going to say this and pull your blouse up. Be a lady. I, <laughs> bless America. Okay. Uh, a lady on the streets. Ooh. You can be the freak in the sheets. Ain't that how it goes? You can't say that. Am I going to get in trouble? Um. So the problem with Jamie is she has to look at me when we talk and no matter where we're at even if she's driving i don't like to sit in the passenger seat i, I like to drive but if for some reason jamie needs to drive or wants to drive or whatever she can't just she can't look forward and talk about she has to do this <laughs> and i'm like look where you're going True. jamie look where you're going i am i can see fine and, and she has to look at me while she's driving and i i don't feel safe because I feel like when you're in a behind the wheel, it's not just you that you have to be safe for. You have to look out for all these other idiots doing stuff. Can I say that? Um, and when you're looking at me, because you're having, a, you may be in your lane, but it's those other dummies. But I really am watching the road. I, I. Your reaction time has to be cut I in really half. I really am watching the road. Now I'm all not going to talk loud. I really am watching the road though, and like. You're doing it again. You're looking at me. You're looking at me. <laughs> I don't care if you look at me here. I don't, but I'm not going to do this when I talk to you. I'm what's, looking, I'm looking here. What's I'm funny looking. is I didn't realize I did it. And he kept telling me, he's like, why are you looking at me? I was like, I yeah. don't know. I'm talking to you. I don't know. I didn't like, this was from the road trip the other day. And then we were driving last night and he was driving and I was looking at him like this when I talked to him. And he's like, I'm like, why Jamie, are, why are I can see you me? in the corner of my eye. I'm like, why do you keep like, because the thing is, at nighttime, even though the car's dark, when we pass a street light, I can see. And I, every time I look over, she's like looking at me, like, I'm like, why are you staring at me for? I'm not annoyed by it. It doesn't bother me. Lester, you should know women can multitask. That's not multitasking. That's just like her. She has a habit of looking. And I understand if we're at a dinner or whatever, you look at whoever you're talking to. But, but I uh, didn't know that I did it. That's the weird part is I didn't know that I did it. I also didn't know that I was louder than you. So well, guess what? I'm, You're learning a lot tonight, now aren't you? Now I'm going to just lead back and <laughs> just talk normal. Hey, let me just go ahead and clarify something real fast about Facebook. Oh, Lord, y'all. Um, Facebook is having some issues, some technical issues on it's not just our channel it is so many channels so don't 
hold it. Uh -uh, Christmas, stop. Guys, I'm sorry. Christmas is coming up into my lap. No, ma'am. Just uh, know that it's not us. If it's a Facebook issue, you're either not getting notified or getting notified late or you're not able to read comments. That's not on our channel. That's a Facebook thing. All right. I'm having to address it because it's popped up several times from different people, not from the same person. So go ahead. Keep going. Now you're scared to look at me. I'm also scared to talk. I don't Why? Want, you don't want I don't to scream? Want it to be too loud. You can talk with your eyes. Someone I, says. I remember lives that we would do from the truck where you would, like, we weren't good at it because we were not doing it very often, and because we were ner we were rushing to get there because of signal and everything else. And I remember distinctly that we would go live, and you would talk a lot, and I would mostly not say much because i also was nervous in that setting and yeah. i would i would mostly make facial expressions yeah and now uh i feel like I well this girl here doesn't mind being on camera that's, right sweetie you don't mind being on camera no she doesn't mind her and stella we'll, we'll take over don't worry about us we'll we'll be able to manage this okay that's enough sweetie that's enough baby girl yeah everybody wants to come around when we're when we're on a video it's like Everybody wants to come around. Look at them. They all want to be a part of Your something special. I, feel, Hi, I actually feel quite warmed up right now from Fiona's breath. Sweetie. Oh, we love her. Yes, Sadie is doing wonderful at the at the ranch property. And it makes me so happy to know that she's doing and fulfilling and living her purpose, friends. And I know that you don't understand that if you couldn't see it with your own eyes. But we've been around Sadie for long enough. How long have we had Sadie? Almost a year. Christmas was a year in January or December. Sadie is June. February, March, April, May. I forgot which June. month. Was it June? Mm -hmm. So Sadie had a little bit of a rough start here. There was some food aggressions at first. Well, she, at the sanctuary was also a oh, rough start because the sanctuary, yes. Well, she could not find her happy place at the sanctuary, I don't think. Annie was mean to her in the pasture. Well, and then there were so many neighborhood dogs. That, and, she all, and then the family dog. And she dog, was a neighborhood dog. And she was struggling to figure out the boundaries and which ones belong and which didn't. And, like, it, that's, that is really confusing to a to a dog that just got there and had spent her time on the street. So it was it was a smart move to bring her here, let her you know, get acclimated to us and, and learn that we're her family and that she could trust us. And then we did have some, some issues with food aggression here and barking and just like her figuring out her space and, and the hierarchy type of thing, because I actually have realized that there's kind of two hierarchies that happen here and there's an outside hierarchy and an inside hierarchy oh. and inside hierarchy is this, I'll call them the smaller dogs that normally come in and like that's their place but the livestock guardian dogs Fiona, Millie and Sadie were outside dogs who would sometimes come in and Millie and Fiona know enough to like this isn't my space but they're here for the treat that we call yeah. them in for or whatever or they're here to cool off or, or just whatever. cooling off in the summer yeah. yeah but Sadie could not put herself in the I'm in somebody else's space because this is all my space yeah and so they're they're um, and and those are just things that we've learned over time, like to, to address and acknowledge. And I think the, the biggest difference, though, is that for the last couple of months with Sadie here, she was uneasy. She was there was something that was making her uneasy. And to this day, I cannot think of what it was. Now, we've talked to you all about it and we've made different ideas and we've joked about was it spirits or ghost? Is it something else? But bottom line is, we don't know what it was, but she was uneasy. She mm -hmm. could not relax. She was always on edge. Yeah. And now, if you could see her, she's at such peace. I mean, just utter peace. Yeah. And I love seeing that with her. I love seeing her just get in love on the cows. And when I go over to visit and, you know, check on everybody, she's just so happy to be out in the pastures. When I stay overnight, she doesn't want to be inside with me she wants to be out there she will come in and she'll eat get a snack i give her some hot dog bun or some weenies um of course her special treats that we get little caesar things that we feed her uh jamie has other little treats but once she gets her snack and or eats she's off to the cows again and that's it what she wants to be believe that she probably her previous life was probably with cows yeah she would she was very happy like I, as i like look back now taking danny and ruby away from here 
was probably where things started to get weird for oh, her. Maybe so. And then putting her back out there with them was like, oh, these are these are my people. She's this back is, with her people. Yeah. Uh, someone asked, um, do we worry about her? My only worry about her is not her walking off or her. She's not going to leave the property. She's not because that's where she wants to be. She's not the kind of dog like who wants to run off when they hear a kid laughing or that they hear someone's talk. She doesn't want to leave. She wants to be there. Um, I do worry sometimes when I, when I watch the cows, how they can sometimes not purposely want to be mean to her, but they just want her out of their way. The larger cows, especially. Um, and so that you can't help but worry about that. But I think I did the right thing by taking her collar off. We were afraid that with her collar around her neck, when the cows do come up and play around with her, the calves or even the larger cows, I didn't want a horn to go up underneath there and get stuck, like get her, yeah. you know, and get her strangled. So what I did was I took her, took her collar off. Um, and then a lot of folks were like freaking out about her not being chipped, but she is chipped. We've got, chipped. we got, all of our dogs are chipped. We get all of our dogs chipped the same day they check them for previous chips. And, but don't forget that just because a dog is chipped does not mean it's like a GPS. You can't use your phone and find out where your dog's at. That's not how the chip Man, works. Do I wish you could because I could have oh, found Sookie then. I know, right? So all of our dogs are chipped, but a vet or whoever has a chip reader has to actually scan and find that chip. And that's where it will pull up the, the owner. So all of our dogs are chipped. Um, I don't think there would be any reason we could ever lose Sadie to somebody unless someone is illegally at the property and takes off with her. But even because then, she's she friendly. doesn't. She doesn't jump in your car. She, no, she doesn't. No, you have to she pick has her up to and run. She wants to run from me. Like she does not want to leave. Like yeah. like we offered in the very beginning when we brought her there for her to come back here. Like that was really the plan of like let's make a few trips. And when she got there and she found her people. She didn't want to leave. Yeah. And I will be the first to admit that I was wrong because I really, I did not believe this was the right place for her. I did not believe, I didn't want this to happen. I, I thought that we could, we could sort out whatever was going on here. But after seeing that, I was like, okay, well, we'll come back in a few hours then. Like it was an afternoon. We came back here to feed and we were like, we'll come back in a few hours and pick her up then and she, maybe she'll be ready to go. Not only was she not ready to go, she was out in the back pasture with the cows and like that has been her stance ever since. So, um, you know, the fears, again, what Lester said, are, are really if she if she got herself in a situation in between cows doing something. Or but, pinned against the wall yeah. or whatever. But guys, I'm just going to say this and you have to remember and, and I know it's hard to un understand or imagine, but I think that we'd be doing more harm to Sadie's well-being by trying to hold her back, hold her down, hold her, enclose her, encage her, or whatever you want to call it. She's happy. And if she's happy, then we have to allow her that. She has a 10 by 10 room out there that is... Uh, it has a doggy door to get into. It has a bed. It has food. It has clean water. That's a 12 by 12, Jamie. Oh, okay. Just well, I was, I was taking a guess. <laughs> um, and then Lester's there lately twice a day and overnight yeah. as well. And then um, I probably go twice a week is the most that I can do right now. I try to go to the sanctuary twice a week and try to go to JNL twice twice a week. And then whatever else I can squeeze in typically. But uh, the kids are behind us playing for all those who are just joining. If you see someone walking behind us, the kids are back here playing soccer. There's we, no school tomorrow. There's no school. They're out of school for a few days. And so I'm happy they're out and about playing. I didn't want them to go back. Hey, y'all go inside. We're on a live. I want them to enjoy their day. It is their Easter also. And they're having a good time playing soccer behind us. So uh, if you don't mind letting them just play. But no, I feel like it would be worse for Sadie. Now, listen, accidents can happen anytime. Don't forget that I don't want to tell you all the accidents that have happened over the course of the years, but animals, uh, good animals can sometimes get caught up in bad situations the same way us as humans can. And sometimes you lose good animals through accidents. But I think it would be worse trying to put Sadie in bubble wrap and put her into a pasture or stick she, her in the she's house. She's not a bubble wrap she's kind not, of dog. And, she, and she's not a people person kind of dog. 
I know that may be a big shock to a lot of people, but the livestock guardian dogs, their bond is to the animals they protect. That's who she wants to be with. Is she happy to see us? Oh, absolutely. Does she enjoy getting a snack when we show up? For sure. But, yeah, because um, somebody brings her cheeseburgers. I've stopped doing that. I'm like, why? I, I was I've, like, why does she only come to your side of the truck now? He's like, I don't know. I stopped doing that when I found out she doesn't like cheese. Yes, I was. I'm so you guys already know this. The only place I pass on the way to the JNL Ranch is Jack in the Box. Uh, it's the easiest drive ever. The only place I have to stop right at the red light, one red light. Is a jack in the box. Sue said you stopped yesterday. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, yeah, well, I do, but I need Dr. Pepper too. So I will swing by and grab her a couple of jumbo jacks. Um, and because it's just a snack, guys, it's just her, you know, it's my way of saying that I love her. The problem is they put cheese on them yesterday and or the day before yesterday. So I get over to the property and I get out the first jumbo jack and I hand it to her and she takes it and she looks so happy and she walks about three feet and she drops it. Turns around and runs back to the truck. I'm like, uh oh, what's wrong? So I looked at the second one and I saw it had cheese on it. So I'm like, oh, is this? So I gave her the second one. She walks to the first one. She drops it and runs back. I'm like, babe, that's all I got. So she finally did eat them. But no, she doesn't like cheese. She wants jumbo jacks, plain and dry, just meat and bun. And <laughs> what? Come on, man. It's okay on occasion. But no, she doesn't like the cheese. So if we ever do that, we have to get with no cheese. But uh, we've also given her weenies, um, glizzies, hot dogs, little hot dog weenies. She likes those. She, but uh, she has real food, too. And oh, she tonight eats her real she's going to be really happy. Because, oh, we got some ham. Go yeah, ahead. so I made, a, I made an Easter ham. Nothing fancy, okay? I put that in the crock pot. And we just let that do its thing. And then what's left over is the ham bone and all of that stuff that's around it. So she's going to be like... She's going to say, forget your dang cheeseburgers. Yeah, she ain't going to be going for nothing. But not, She'll have that uh, bone to chew on for a while. But no, Jamie's right, guys. I, I'm over there a lot more than you realize. And I actually probably just remind folks about that, too, is just remember that even though we do make 10, 15-minute videos, uh, there's 24 hours in a day, okay? I was saying, I think and we don't sleep eight hours like most folks. We sleep maybe five or six if we're lucky. And we've been staying <laughs> apart with the barn building going on and other things like that. Like, there's quite a bit. Like, I don't come on here and announce, like, well, Lester left me at home alone again tonight. Because, uh, you know, that would make things a little bit vulnerable and weird. But um, there are a lot of times where no, he's got to no. stay there because he's got to be there early or stay late. Or there's equipment that's got to be watched or, you know, that type of thing. And then you're Yeah, there. if there's workers there, I don't want to be I don't want to be off the property if right. there's workers. And we've had a lot of workers there over the last month with the fence building the barn building uh we've had some rock brought in some culverts put in we've had uriel win a couple she's of days eat, and hold on. she's not eating the bone she's eating the meat off of the bone the rest of the meat that's on the bone take chick, relax she's eating the rest of the meat yeah listen don't it's gonna be fine it's gonna be fine it's it's not a lot okay it's 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 but it's hold on. Be okay. This is what always gets me. And I'm not judgy. I'm not a judgy person. But you ever feel like the same people that get on there and scream at you for what you're feeding your animal or your kids are probably the same ones who are eating their own hamburger or their own cheeseburger or their own fast food? It's going to be okay. Right. All I know is like <laughs> I have seen every dog here pull something dead up and drag it up here. Like there's still a deer school with horns on the propane tank right thank now. thank you crystal crystal says chill people guys come on there was chill. a spine on our steps there's there's a, a femur that's laying at the bottom of the driveway right now like put I her in bubble wrap lester that you know okay <laughs> oh boy they have stomachs of steel i promise you but it's always good it's gonna be okay because almost all of these dogs came from situations where i guarantee you they were eating 10 times worse trash oh my god and whatever yes. that they could get their hands on so i i'm not like you do you and we'll do us <laughs> but i will just say that that these dogs are living a pretty dang good life uh compared to where they came from and speaking of which I'm, oh, i posted here we go. yesterday uh a throwback of billy bob i saw it and then i got an email from miss kathy oh okay to to give us an update on how he's doing and 
I just that little guy. He was never meant to be a farm dog. I can no. assure you of that. He no. is he is living his best life. Uh, I think all of our dogs that we've rehomed are living their best life. I know. I just I get the most updates on Billy Bob, and he's still sporting his little poncho, and he's got a cute little striped vest. And I'm getting like, serious. We got a serious talk to come up. Okay. Keep going, and then I'm gonna feed off of that and talk about what we've been talking a whole lot about lately. Well, I just I know, know like Billy Bob was the cutest, tiniest little thing, but that little guy had the worst anxiety and, mm -hmm. and Miss Kathy has been treating him for that for about six months now. And they have finally found uh, a com like a con concoction boy. I couldn't even say that word, a concoction, concoction that is really working for him. So uh, really happy for him. <sighs> okay. You ready for this, everybody? So Jamie and I, let me just, first of all, start off with saying how blessed we are to find ourselves in a position to be able to look at each of our different animals and animal groups and try to find a place to put them where we can hopefully give them their very best life. And so in saying so, some of the dogs that we got off the street, got the vet checkups, got everything taken care of, but realized they were not a good fit with us for whatever reason, and we move them along, I think that they're all doing very well. And we made those decisions based on what's best for the dog, for each and every individual animal. Uh, meaning, uh, well, so with Sadie, for example, she's off the other property. Do we miss her? Absolutely. Do I worry about her? Yes, I do. But I also know what she needs and what's best for her. And so it's working out fine. But um, we are, Jamie and I are right now are in, we've had a lot of discussions lately about all of our animals the ones over at the uh, in plum grove the ones here and of course the ones over at the j and l and we're trying to figure out where is the best life for everybody and so we are still a little bit torn on the donkeys on the alpacas not the pigs right what's wrong talk so we obviously are really blessed to be able to have options and and know that we want to be able to always keep keep our minds open that nothing has to be permanent or forever or that type of thing but as we look at each property we also have this deep-seated fear of drought like we experienced the last two years oh I'm, yeah we're terrified of that and we know that what we see today could look very different in 90 days or yeah. 120 days so we're trying to make predictions along with educated and you know thoughtful decisions about what we do and, and when and i think that i i'm struggling because I know the care that some of our animals need and that it would be easiest to have them right here. But I also am terrified that bringing them here will deplete or do something to shuffle the, the, the ecosystem of balance right now that would be reverse things from, from where they are. Does that make any sense? Yes. Okay. So let's just take animals like on an individual basis. So Beverly and Ivy, because this is actually, Paula brings up the two that we've had a lot of talks about recently. Uh, I mean, a lot, a lot. Do you want me to wait on this? Or can we just talk about it? Let's talk about a little bit of it. Let's okay. not, let's I, not I will dive let you into, talk. Let's, let's stick with just donkeys today. Is okay. That okay. Today we're only going to talk donkeys. And right now we're in the talking phase. Yeah. We haven't actually done anything. Can you check out that fella? I believe we're gonna have to block somebody. The Richard it's fake. guy. Just leave. Just let it alone. Just, Y'all just leave it alone. Just, just leave, him leave alone. it alone. Don't. He's let a it. fake. He's a bot. If you pick at it, it'll fester. Okay. Don't. Don't let your troubles fester. Don't let your troubles fester. Come watch Longhorn Luster. Because no. because I don't see the original one, and he doesn't repost again, and then I don't want to do with it. So just just <laughs> leave it alone. Don't don't encourage it. Yes. Okay. So all right. So here we go. So if we're only talking donkeys, everyone knows that Beverly was like this with Dixie. Well, Dixie had the tumors. She is no longer with us. Everyone knows Dixie is no longer with us. So we've introduced Beverly to the other horses, and we ended up getting ourselves a little bit of a, a herd 
of horses and ponies. We always joke about our ponies, the donkeys, who think them to be the horses. Uh, they think themselves horses. But um, right now, we got the four horses back who are doing wonderful. It's great that Jamie can spend time with them every single day throughout the day. But our problem with bringing the donkeys right now is the fact that, like Jamie said, we don't know what to expect with our grass. The Ag Extension told us he laid out some steps for us to do. We we're following those steps. But what he told us was no large animals that are going to take the grass and pull it, the roots and all, out of the ground. Because of how dry things were last year and how how vulnerable the soil was and all the steps that we need to do, we need those roots to be really established. So this pasture is actually off limits outside of goats. Goats are fine. Goats. The goats the are tops. eating. Yeah. The goats are eating different things that are coming up around the trees and weeds and brush and all that. And they don't, they don't rip from the, from the roots like that. So hey, son. bringing, bringing donkeys life? here would be, I think they, it's just too it's I don't think it's time yet until we know for a fact that it's all going to be okay with the grass. And right now we don't know because right now we're getting plenty of rain. We got our winter grass is still going fine. It hasn't got warm enough for that winter grass to die back yet and we don't know what's going to happen with our with our new grass. Do, you, our, do they know about ivy yet? Is that posted? I haven't posted oh. it. You can talk about it though; it doesn't matter. The other part is that Ivy is Ivy is having some problems right now, and it's going to need some daily care. So that sort of like everything that Lister says about like we should wait sort of escalated that a little bit. But then I also know that any donkey that comes here is going to find themselves in the hierarchy of below Rita, and if if Ivy is not well, going under Rita is not a good scenario either, which would mean she would have to go over here in the dry lot for a while, which isn't the end of the world. And that's just where it leaves us in a conundrum. And then we talk about the relationship that Dan and Beverly have formed at this point in time as well. And I'm really struggling with just taking Ivy and Beverly. I, I really think that the four of them are their own little herd right now. And then we talked about J and L, but if we put them in the front pasture, we would need to build a shelter. And then they can't really go with the cows at the J and L because of the feed buggy. Uh, the feed buggy is great for the cows. They only eat a certain amount and then the salt inhibitor or the salt limiters will make them stop eating. But horses and donkeys will continue to eat until they end up getting themselves. What do they call that? They, they would get colic. Colic. And they can die from that. And so if we have the donkeys over at the other property, we got to be real careful with that feed buggy and how we move it around and not letting the animals have too much time at the feed buggy to get them sick. So we are really at a conundrum. Is that a, the best? Is that a word? You know, yeah. a conundrum. We have a conundrum on our hands, y'all. Does that make any sense? A yeah. conundrum. Well, and that's <laughs> a big I word. Think, I like that. That's where I think that. And then the final piece of that is that Indy is a part of that herd and Indy doesn't get shorn for another two. Shorn. Yeah shorn yeah okay shorn sheared sheared so did you just say so shorn she, so she will be she was shorn and she's no get she was sheared and she's going to be sheared sheared not shorn shorn <laughs> that's not a word okay Sheared. Shorn is a word. No, it's not. Shorn is right. Thank no, you, Cindy. No, Cindy, take it. Oh my God, they're Listen, all. They only. I've been watching me woman. some right choice shearing and hearing stop. them talk. No, 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 no. It's not shorn. No one says that. No. Okay, y'all are just gonna do that woman thing. Y'all can't do that. Anyway, so it's, shorn is not a. Oh my God, y'all can't take Indy until <laughs> after, and we're not gonna talk about that together. But we can't take Indy until after she gets sheared, shorn, whatever. She gets a haircut, okay? Yeah, there we go. And then, because they're all really their own herd. Shorn cannot be a word. And no. Staying at I'm a Survivor, it, like. Sheared, thank you so much. We're also just trying to figure out what's the best case for each and every animal. <sighs> and being able, like, like right now, being able to care for Ivy's leg takes 
two of us. So I love the fact that y'all are able to get a little bit of a glimpse into our day by day, because it's not stuff we always talk about. You always, like I say, see a five or 10 minute quick little video and we try to make them funner and gooder, which are words and uh, <laughs> funner and gooder videos, which are words. Thank you very much, Jamie. And sometimes we don't include all of the behind the scenes and some of the things that we are thinking about and our dilemmas, our conundrums um who's shorn and who's not you know but if uh this was, if this was fall right now if it were fall yes then all the donkeys and all all of that could come here and it would be no issue because our, we would have winter grass and yeah. seed at least planted we would be right. looking okay with the water more than likely so so that would be fine and then uh, then I would have the capability to do the other part is hooves. Okay. So this is one part we haven't talked about yet. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Hoof. So hoof care for the donkeys is just as important as the horses and having the farrier go to both places is challenging because it's hard to get a farrier at one place. Right. And, and to be able to do two and then hope that you can squeeze that all it's and get one of us there to support that because it's just, it's really hard. So bringing them all Sweetie. to one place is like best case, most ideal goal. But there's a whole lot of buts and factors into it that we have to think through. And so what will happen is we have made so many mistakes. So we've also, you know, we learn from those mistakes, but, um, sometimes it's just trial and error. We try it out. And if it doesn't work, then we, we don't, we're not, pointing fingers and laughing about i told you so whatever we just try whatever will work until we figure it all out so we will say that we're going to work on it we're talking about it uh once we get all of the sheep and the alpaca shorn then we will figure out where to go with everything but that's another thing too and you don't don't want to talk about alpacas right now i get it that's fine we will not talk alpacas or pigs or yeah, but, uh, let's save those we, for future discussions because don't, next right Sunday now, night, y'all, we're talking alpacas. Well, right now, Ivy is the priority. Like that's that's the biggest invocation of conversation and concern is our sweet Ivy. And and I will make a phone call to Dr. Cochran tomorrow. I'm nervous because she doesn't they they don't do farm calls anymore. I know. So like all of this is like layering up on what what to do and. And when I say vet care, I'm not talking about like just go spray and medicate. I'm talking about some of this might need like truly surgical stuff. It might need it, it may need to be soaked for an hour a day. Like there's a there's a lot of possibilities of what may be going on with with our with our IV. And um, it will be I, very challenging to so do if, not here. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's the sad thing. So Ivy's very old, y'all. And so when an animal gets up there in age, you're not just dealing with the issue at hand. Uh, in this case, it's that horrible thing on her leg. But you're also dealing with a lot of age and and stuff. And so you have to be very gentle and work with her. Very, and, and, and she's a donkey, which means she has that she has that she can snap in a second and become an ass. <laughs> that, right. Yeah. And so we can't expect Ellie and Megan. They don't know their way around the donkeys. They're fine feeding them and grooming them and loving on them. That's, that's easy. But uh, when you have to go out there and actually medicate and put a lead or a halter on one and give move it to a stall. And when they're already in pain and they're already in pain and they don't feel like being moved around or, or messed with. And so today it took me and Megan both and Del Lee trying to all work together to medicate and doctor up her leg. Jamie and I did it yesterday. And so it, it's a lot of work. And so it's going to be a lot of driving back and forth or that's the thing. Do we go ahead and bring her over? But if we do that, we're going to, the whole balance of everything is going to be messed up. So I don't know, y'all. We we have we have our things to think about. It's not just all. It's, we don't just. It's not a split decision, split second decision. It's also there are a lot of circumstances that we need to make phone calls about over the next couple of days, and also think through because <clears throat> it's it's not just like oh, Ivy needs to go to the vet. It is way more than that. Yeah. 
Um, but uh, we will figure it out. We thank y'all for thinking about it and just knowing that we, we have a lot on our mind and a lot on our plates right now with everything, but we'll figure it all out. We'll do the best that we can. We're not going to let, let you down. We're not going to let Ivy down and we're, we are going to try. I want to remind you all that there are uh, videos out on Facebook and YouTube. The YouTube videos are a bit longer. Today, for example, was my drone, a uh, uh, drone flight over God's country. And uh, we did a shorter version of that on Facebook and a much longer version on YouTube. And uh, what do you got coming up this week? I have uh, I have our Friday trip Ooh. on tomorrow, which my video, Lester's video was was awesome. And he found some crazy things. I found what I, I'm sorry. I think I found better and more entertaining things because I got out of the car a lot more than you, you did. At some point I, I had enough. I just had enough. We went to a really neat thing. I don't know how you guys feel about that, but they advertise this thing as the largest antique show or antique whatever in the world. So you picture the world's a pretty, the world's pretty big, right? We live in a pretty big world, right? And you think, whoa, this is the largest in the world. So that must be something special. So we make the two and a half hour drive over and, and it said it advertised like 20 miles of antiques and we're like 20 miles. That's a long ways. Well, it is 20 miles, but you're not like back to back to back yeah. to back to back. It's like a, a farm and that farm will lease the entire farm out for a Boots, couple of booths to yeah. set up and then you go down the road a mile there's another farm that they've put some tents up out front the more you got to round top though was way more what i would call like boutiques or or like art studios that brought stuff which fine you know like there are uh, there's obviously a market for that but that wasn't my type of antique no. show my type of antiques are like I don't know, something that doesn't cost $30,000. <laughs> no, that and that was but, what you bothered know. me. We went to see antiques, but it was really, I mean, in all honesty, I feel like we're seeing the exact same thing all the way down the road. And the further down the road you get, the cheaper, because they people up in the front are going to try to sell it first. But there are things that they're not even antiques. They're not even an antique They're rugs. A... and Hold on. Turkish rugs and Brazilian rawhide. And they would throw these names out there trying to impress you with, oh, these rugs are Turkish rugs. And this is a Brazilian. I'll give you an rug. example. Have you ever been to like what was supposed to be something and in the middle of it was a mattress sale or somebody wanted to clean your ring or some or a chiropractor? That Thank wanted you, to... Julie. It's a high priced flea market is all we went to. A very but large. It, but it wasn't. It high was... priced. It's super high priced. And, and there were really neat places. And I feel like. I found one that was pretty phenomenal, and that's in my video. That one you stayed in the car for. Um, and then the further we got from Round Top was the more exciting stuff to right see. Back. So I uh, – are you, okay. So that's in my video tomorrow. But it was it was an experience. And I know that in his video I say, like, oh, I was kind of let down. It just was different than what I anticipated. And for people who, like – I'm guessing live and breathe and we're looking for very specific things or we're remodeling a house or we're, you know, like, like building a, a hotel or things like that. By all means, the, that stuff was there. I was way more probably thinking of flea market style versus $25,000 vases or, you know, crazy things like that. And, and I wanted to see more history than just, I, I guess, I guess I was weirded out by all the rugs and the boutiques there as well. That, that was it, but it was an experience and we got to spend the day together off the farm, which is a very rare thing. And he said, yes, which kind of blew my mind. Um, and he drove and he sat in pretty significant traffic as well. And, uh, you know, it was, it was a good time. And would I do it again? Probably I don't need to. I could probably find some flea markets around here or smaller events that would be just as fulfilling. So I will add a little bit to what you just said. And I'll listen. I know that I let Jamie down. And here's how. Not. No, I did. Here's how I let her down. Because the last time she went to Round Top, she went with Stephanie and Brienne. And girls 
night out or a girl's day out or a girl's brunch, whatever you want to call it, a girl's two hour drive across Texas to see whatever is very different than a Jamie and Lester going out to see the same exact same thing. And so, whereas you guys were laughing and giggling and doing all, oh my God, look at this. Oh my gosh. Can you imagine? And all the funny things that girls do, that's not really the same as you interact with your partner. Cause I'm not going to be all giddy and all grabbing things and just looking at, and oh my God, you got to try these on and look, oh my God. And you know, how can you see out of those? Those stop. are so full of fingerprints. Well, that's true. But bottom line is what I'm trying to say is Jamie was let down because she was expecting to have that same energy, that same excitement, that same. And I'm just like my shoulder. Oh, my knee. No. Oh, and I'm sitting there. I wasn't trying to be a complainer, but I'm like driving like this over here because my shoulder didn't work. And then my knee has to stay and I needed her to keep my knee off. It's complicated. But bottom line is I feel like I was a total letdown. I was like a sore That's thumb. I was a stick, in the, a stick in the mud. I That's was a stick in the true. mud. I was like a stick in the mud. But uh, yeah, we had some time. We spent some time together. The old stick in the mud and Jamie. We went to but. Bucky's, <laughs> which was awesome. Uh, we rode in the car together. We talked a lot about what we just talked about with donkeys and, you know, strategize about that. Deborah says I was a Debbie Downer. Yes, Deborah, I was. I was quite the Debbie Downer, but I was there. He, that was all in your head. And I said that that day. I was like, that's all in your head. I'm having a great time. And just, you know, the funny thing is, you think about it, we went to the Dr. Pepper Museum in Waco. We went to just every place that we've gone to the uh, all the antique, not the, the plant places over there in Sealsby, wherever you want to go. And I take you. I am completely fine with sitting in the car. I'm not upset about that. Or I'll get out and then I'll sit on a bench or I'll sit at a picnic table. I'll sit somewhere. I'm like, babe, you go do your thing. I'll wait for you here. And I am. I never complain. I don't say, where are you? How much longer? I don't care. I don't care. Go have your fun. But I just, uh, it's, it's what, is it what I would do with my day? Probably not, but I, I don't mind doing it. It's just that you got to understand that it's a lot of strain on me. Okay. It's a lot of strain. I know. And I felt a bad. Lot of I rubbed your no, you don't have to on. feel bad until you let me drive. And then I looked at you and then, yeah, I finally let her drive. My shoulder could not do this anymore. So I had to get my shoulder and try to hold it upwards. And if I get over on the passenger side, her car has a little handle up here. I can I can hold on to it. And that actually felt really good. But that means I had to let her drive. So I'm over here trying to rest my shoulder. And I look over. She's like, hey. You're so you? exaggerating right now. And I'm like, could you watch the road, please? Just watch the road. I am. <laughs> I Hold on. I did not <laughs> stare at you like that. You do. You don't when even realize you I would initiate staring. the conversation and I would look at you like that. And then I would look back at the road, but I'm trying. I don't know. That's... <laughs> it doesn't matter. We're having fun. We made it. We're making it work, y'all. We, made, we, it, made, we it. made it work. We had fun. We laughed about things that we saw. <laughs> we made memories. Yes, and we, did. we, you know, we had a good day. It was it a was. good Friday. Mm-hmm. It was. Stop making it weird. What's wrong? What's wrong? I don't get it. What's wrong with you? <laughs> All right. Can we say bye, everybody, now? It's been over. Our, our hour is up. Our hour is up. Hey, tomorrow. They want to know when your Ivy video is coming out. Okay. Well, not tomorrow. I have a very special, special video out tomorrow maybe the most special video that i've made in a very long time you will love it i hope you'll catch that video tomorrow um the sanctuary video from plum grove will be the next day there all right and the next day after that too because i had to go back twice for ivy <laughs> so we got ivy round one ivy round two round one's with jamie round two is me and megan with ellie but uh, that will all be coming up this week and a lot of other neat stuff. So thank you all for being invested in us and Ivy and all the babies, the dogs. It doesn't bother me that you worry. I appreciate you worrying about all the babies. But just know that we are trying our best. And our best may not be good enough always, but it is our best. It's all we can do, y'all. So, Y'all, uh, thank you for spending Sunday night, Easter Sunday with us. We're really blessed to have you and for allowing us into your homes and phones and giving us the greatest gift of all, which is your time. 
We hope that you have a blessed rest of the evening. Stay safe and stay well, and we will catch you on the next video. Absolutely. Good night, guys. Good night, y'all.